G'day everyone and welcome to the next intro video for Flesh and Blood covering Crucible of War. We're right at the end and we're going to be looking at the generic cards, okay? Now, I know I've got Cav Diane on the screen. He's a merchant, hero. But I'm putting him in the generic section at the moment because there are no merchant cards and the only cards he can really have are generic cards. So, yeah, being included in this. Now, I will start off with um, saying that Cav Diane, we've got... Uh, here we go. I promised to call out, so I'm going to keep to my promise. Cody Willems, I will put a link at the bottom or as a comment on this video. Uh, Cody Willems has written an article, and I'll put that link in there regarding emergent, a merchant's guide to Blitz, where he covers his thoughts on the deck. And I think it's quite an interesting read and how hard this character is to play at this point in time. So, but he had a, um, a good twist to it. So take a look and we will get started. Well done, Cody. All right. Cav Dayen, Trader of Skins. Once per turn, spend three. Resources, if a hero has more life than any other hero, they lose one life and create a copper token. Then, if a hero has less than any other hero, they gain one life. Go again. All right. And you can spend four to destroy a copper token, draw a card, go again. So, all right. So, once again, we're looking at a multiplayer format where this leader can be used and... It's going to be really annoying because your life's going to be going up, down, and depending on what's going on. So he really is a very chaotic character in that regard. So let's just read it one more time. If a hero has more life than any other hero, they lose one and create a copper token. Then if a hero has less than any other hero, they gain one. Yeah, so if he wants to spend three, he can do that. I, I honestly don't know why you would other than trying to get that copper token. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a tough hero to play, but let's keep going on with um, the cards in the set. Now, once per turn, spend two. This is Telashar, the Lost Prince, a two-handed weapon. Two cost, put a Rust counter on Telashar, the Lost Prince, and attack. So it's a four attack. At the beginning of your end phase, if Telashar, the Lost Prince, has three or more Rust counters on it, destroy it. So, it's a generic weapon, it's it's not flash, you know, you've got pretty much three hits with it before it goes, so if you're looking at 12 damage, that's pretty good, but it's a weapon that does get destroyed, two costs, but anyone can use it, so it really throws it into that arena for someone like Cap Diane or any other future leaders potentially in Monarch when the set comes out, uh, can use four damage for two. Look, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I'd love to be proven incorrect with some decks that use it and make it really effective. Uh, Cody had it included in Cap Diane, so take a look at what he had to write about that as well. Gambler's Gloves, whenever a hero, a hero, meaning yourself or any other hero, rolls a six-sided dice, you may destroy Gambler's Gloves. If you do, that hero re-rolls the dice. Okay, so it is a majestic card. Pretty cool card. It is zero defense. If you're playing it to stuff up other players, you're going to be using it against Brute. And that's really about it, unless I'm missing something else. For Brute, I think this is a fantastic card. They are going to be taking um, the gauntlets away, though, for this. But you know what? It could be worth it. When I've played Brute and had to roll those dice and kept rolling low numbers, I wish I had a reroll. And a reroll could be very effective in this game, especially when you need that extra turn so or the extra action. So Gambler's Gloves, very nice card. Get it in Cold Fall if you can while it's still there. Yeah, no, very nice. Right, Coax a Commotion. All right. If Coax a Commotion hits, choose any number. 
All right, so you can choose as many as you want of these. Now it is a zero cost card doing four damage, two defense and one pitch. Each hero creates a quicken token. Each hero draws a card and each hero gains one life. So you get to choose between those things. Me, look, this is a majestic card. I think few people like it and it looks brilliant as a foil. I don't like it myself. I, I really am against using cards. They belong in the game, but I'm against using cards that in any way benefit an opponent, regardless of what they give me. Like it would have to be something special for me to get a bonus and be able to use it more effectively than my opponent. But each hero gains a quicken token. So we're giving most heroes go again. Like I don't want to give anyone go again. Like that's crazy. Each hero draws a card. I don't want my opponent with an extra card, especially on defense. And each hero gains a life. I'm trying to get their life down. Why? As much as I need life, I don't think that one life to me is so important that it gives them one life because it's just so much harder. Very rare, I would think, to use this card. I don't like it at all. I'm happy for my opponent to use it against me. No doubt I'm going to be proven wrong in the future when this is used effectively against me. But as it stands right now, I don't like it. I can't see a use for using it. No. Great for my collection and in foil, but no, I don't want to use it. All right. Gorganian Tome. This card has shot well up there in regards to cost. People are looking for the foils. You can only use one in a deck. It's legendary. Comes under a mythic slot, but it's got the skill of legendary. You may only have one Tome in your deck or Gorganian Tome in your deck. Draw X cards where X is one plus the number of Gorgonian Tomes in all graveyards. Go again. Zero cost, no defense, no attack. I'm on the same boat with Coaxer Commotion. I do not like this card. If I'm using it, yeah, I'm, it replaces itself. So what? You know, if it wasn't in my deck, I would have picked up another card. I'm throwing it out. To draw a card like it's not doing anything for me <sighs> you know what oh <sighs> i might be wrong in this regard because it's got go again it's a generic action and people like kano and viscerai can use it effectively but i really hate the fact of playing this and knowing that my opponent can play one and get a one up on me yeah i might be able to do that on them Re-looking at this card with the go again and generic action, and it's a zero cost. Yeah, I can see where it's used with Kano and Viserai. Maybe in my sideboard when I come against those type of characters and they're trying to do their normal non-attack actions, I can maybe throw this out and get a one-up on them. But I would hate to be stuck with this card in hand, especially late game with no defense and being on the defense, having drawn it up in my defensive step and my my opponent is attacking me like oh my goodness i i don't know double-edged sword with this one guys for me but it's got a high price mark and a lot of people are after it so <laughs> i'm thinking i'm gonna be wrong in this respect but yeah all right put it in the comments people and that moves into the next card which i think is amazing and I could be proven wrong on this one as well. But this is a zero cost, three pitch. I love it already. It's got no defense, which hurts. It's got no attack either. I wish it had defense. This is a generic instant though. So take that in note, instant. Attack action cards can't gain attack from their own effects or the effects of attack reaction cards this turn. Now, you can see why I love this card so much because I play Ninja. It's a zero cost, three pitch, coming up against my worst matchup being Warrior. Smack this down. Um, big smile on my face and watch them pass the turn. 
Yeah, good. Especially Dorinthia with her sword. Um, against Kasai, not as much, but yeah, no, I love this card. You know, usable against so many decks. Uh, usable against Guardian. Um, can't gain own effects and the effects of attack reaction cards this turn. Yeah, I just I just like it full stop, even against another ninja player. Like, <laughs> stopping them from getting any pluses. Yeah. From their own effects. Attack action cards gain. Can't gain things from their own card effects. I'd hate for this card to be played against me, and I'm hoping that a lot of decks can't find the room to run this card. But I think it's an amazing card. I believe I've got three foils, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, great card. Now, looking at the rest of the cards coming up there, no, there's a few very influential cards, actually, and some reprints, so let's keep going. Promise of Plenty. This is our first tricolor card of the generics. Now, if Promise of Plenty hits a hero who doesn't have a card in their arsenal, puts the top card of their deck face down into their arsenal. If Promise of Plenty is played from arsenal, it gains go again. All right, so you're giving your opponent an arsenal card. From my previous discussion, I do not like giving the opponent anything, but let's take a look at this card. It's zero pitch, uh, zero cost. Fantastic. Comes in one, two, or three pitch. Uh, three attack, two defense, so not great going down to two and one attack on each of the other color cards. If Promise of Plenty hit each hero, all oh, right, okay. It's each hero, not the opposing hero. So each hero doesn't have a card in their arsenal, puts the top card of their deck face down into their arsenal. Fantastic card. No, I do like it. If Promise of Plenty is played from Arsenal, it gains go again. So if you're able to play this from Arsenal, go again. You're able to grab another card, look at it. Could be a defense reaction, could be an attack reaction, could be an attack action or an instant. Throw it down here. You can still be using it in your turn. If it's a defense reaction, you've got one in there. You're drawing four cards for your defense. Great card. No, I like it. Um, I wish it could be higher attack strength, but... I like it. I like it a lot. And for a person like Kev Dayen, I think it's definitely a major card at the moment for his games to be using. Would you use it at one if Promise of Plenty hit? So it's got a hit. So you want to be at three, and you probably want some reactions taking place in regards to that. Speaking of attack reactions, Lunging Press in foil in a rare slot, Target attack card gains plus one. Fantastic. I'm really glad they did the reprints from the Ira cards here because I was tired of people asking me for the Ira cards just so they could get certain cards out. They were there for new players, but there were, there were really good cards in that deck that people wanted and needed, especially for their top tier decks. So yeah, no, I'm really glad about this reprint. Two defense, yeah, but... It is what it is. It's a, it's a zero cost, three pitch. Love the card. Two defense. You just deal with it. Plus one on the attack. Great. Springboard Somersault. Two pitch, zero cost. Love it. If it's played from your arsenal, gain plus two. So it's two defense. If it's in your arsenal and you use it, you gain four defense. Great card. A lot of people have been using it as a generic card. Fits in every deck. All right. Cash in. Oh, my goodness. Warrior has been made even better, if you can believe it, due to this card. Spoils of War giving him the copper tokens. And then this card. Cost four. It's a two pitch, two defense. So it's pretty good in that respect that it defends. I wouldn't expect it to have. Generic action with go again, mind you. You may destroy four coppers, two silvers, or one gold, therefore alluding that we're going to be having silvers and gold coins coming up, most likely in Monarch. All right, so destroy those coins and you control... All right, you may destroy four coppers, two silvers, or one gold you control rather than pay cash-in's cost. So you don't even need to pay the cost of cash-in being four, normally two-card pitch. Draw two cards, amazing card, and go again. This is crazy. Warrior has been made so good with this card, with its potential. 
It's also a generic action. So people like Kano and Viserai can get a lot of their other abilities off. Kano is instance and Viserai is other, um, creating rune chance just by playing a card like this. And it's got Gogan. It's an amazing card in a rare slot. You need this in foil, people. And I expect the cashing cost for foil to remain high, go high, remain high, uh, especially as a first edition print. Get it while it's still there before they go to unlimited for sure. All right, let's move on. Reinforce the line, the next of our tricolor cards. Target defending attack action gains plus four defense. <laughs> oh no. So this is zero cost as well. Amazing card. Generic instant. Doesn't have a defensive value itself, but you've got an attack action card in your hand that you play for a defense and it gets plus four. Amazing card. Guardian players are crying at the moment looking at this card. Yeah, they might use it, but it's going to be used against them. Yellow and blue are plus three, plus two as well. Look, as a blue with a three pitch, zero cost, and plus two on the shield, I see this highly used as well. It's, it's a fantastic card. And you know what the crap thing about it is? Warrior uses it as well. <laughs> Oh, wow. Can you imagine Warrior running around with this with their plus two as an instant? That's, yeah. Could you imagine that? So target defending attack action card gains plus two. So it is an instant target defending attack action card. So I need to get clarification on that, that once you move to the defense reaction step, whether you play this card and your attack reaction card actually gets the plus on it from before, thereby not you not needing to play defense reaction. That would That's an interesting question right after this video. I'm going to throw it up. So the question will probably be online well in advance of this video coming up. So take a look on the boards. All right, Brutal Assault. Now, Brutal Assault, it's just base, terrible, nasty damage. Pay two for six damage, three defense. Wow. Whew. When you need that big attack, yeah, I like it. And look at that. Boom, reinforce the line. Even a blue reinforce the line with this, you're still defending for five. No, yeah, five. Doing six attack, that's crazy. Six, five, and four attack. Pretty good cards. All right, we've seen another reprint of Cracked Bauble. This time you can get it in foil. A lot of people after it. There's been, the Quicken tokens have been reprinted in foil as well, under a common slot, so very good. When you play an attack action card or attack with a weapon, destroy Quicken. Then the attack gains go again. You don't need a uh, flock of the feather walkers anymore because you've got coax of commotion that can be making this. Spores of war creates your copper token. So there's a token itself with a standard flesh and blood backing. Action, spend four, destroy copper, draw a card, go again. So once again, people, generic cards really defining the meta. I, I don't care what people say about generic cards being you know, less than and a secondary thought. For me, I think generic cards really form the basis of uh, the style of decks, as well as the top tier decks as well. Like without the generic cards, we wouldn't see the decks that we see at the moment. And I think they've opened up a whole new vast format of play. And I'm really excited for the game at this point. Hmm, I, I really, I'm just loving all the cards and I really want to see what happens with the merchant class later on and whether Cavdain gets further support, maybe an adult version. That would be very interesting. All right, people, that is it. Thank you for your time. That's the end of the Crucible of War series, probably the end of the intro series. I'm yet to decide on that. There are other videos that I need to compile to continue with the Flesh and Blood series. So, yeah, thank you for your time today. And, yeah, see you on the next video. See you all.